911 operators of Reddit. What call will you simply never forget? During a power outage, I got screamed at by a man who demanded to know why he didn't have power when a car just drove by with its lights on. An 11 year old girl hung herself. The sound of her father calling in, bullying so hard he could barely breathe, let alone speak, and the mother's screams in the background all haunt me. Eight years later, I can't imagine surviving that. Older lady, I want to say maybe early 70s, calls in with a sort of polite urgency in her voice, tells me she thinks she's having a stroke. Tells me she has her grandchild at the house with her. Asks me to call her daughter to come get the child. By the time she's done giving me the phone number there's just a very slight slur in her speech. By the time Em's got there, probably no more than 5 minutes or so, I couldn't understand a thing she was saying. Fascinating, disturbing, and profoundly sad hearing someone stroke out on the phone as they are talking to you. Not me, but an old roommate of mine told me this story. When she was an operator about 3 years ago, a boy about 5 or 6 years old called 911 and said dad is holding a gun to mommy's head. Through the phone, she could hear the father screaming at his wife and threatening to kill the kid. My roommate told the kid to go hide and had to talk him through it, even when she heard gunshots. When the police and ambulances arrived, the mom had been fatally shot, but they were able to save the kid before the dad shot him. Edit. Sorry I don't have any more info on the boy. I'm guessing my roommate didn't get any updates on him since she was just the 911 operator. She was actually a kinda shitty roommate and we ended on bad terms, so I can't ask her. She moved around a lot, so I don't remember where this happened, but I remember she said it was a rough area. She had a lot of intense calls. Answered to the sounds of a couple of women absolutely screaming and wailing, I'm sure anyone that has done the job long enough knows the type of scream I mean, that blood curdling scream of someone in genuine anguish. Knew something was up, and got police and ambulance on the way, trying to get them on the phone, to get details and a boy of no more than 5 years old comes on the phone, and says my daddy is swinging from the roof and his eyes are open and staring. He had hung himself, while his family were out doing their shopping. I took a call from a woman who told me her 15 year old nephew had locked himself in the garage during a family gathering after making suicidal statements. I stayed on the line with her until my deputies could get on scene. Before they got there, however, the family was able to gain entry to the garage only to find him hanging by the neck from the garage door opener while burning to death. Apparently he had doused himself with gasoline or some sort of accelerant, lit himself on fire, and then dropped with a rope. I'll never forget the screams of horror from the caller and the rest of the family in the background when they saw him as well as the cracks in my sergeant's voice as he yelled for more units over the radio as the family started mobbing them when they arrived on scene. I've been a 911 dispatcher for 11 years in a medium sized center, population 180,000. We have more than our share of crazy calls, but there are only a few calls that have stuck with me. For me the ones that I can't get rid of aren't even close to being the craziest or most brutal. 7 to 8 years ago I took a 911 call from a man who came home to find his adult sister had been raped and beaten. The suspect had wrapped a telephone cord around her neck then tried to push her through the window of the apartment. He was understandably very distraught. She was still alive and was able to talk to me. She had not been blindfolded and I was certain I could get a description of the person who had done this to her. She answered all of my other questions but absolutely refused to give me any info on the suspect. I later found out that the reason was self-preservation. The person who did it was the brother who called 911 for help. He was so believable it really messed with my head. I also felt horrible that I had continued pressing her for info with the person who hurt her was right there and that I could have potentially put her in more danger without realizing. I'm sure plenty of other people will have crazier ones. But the first time I took an overdose call, it's a crazy experience literally hearing someone dying on the other side of the phone. It was sort of a mix of gurgling, screaming, and gasping for air. Fortunately the friend of the person that was odding was the one who called so I could actually get some information to pass along to my officers slash firefighters. 
Unfortunately the caller was also super high and freaking out, understandably, and decided to lie about what drugs his friend was on, which slightly delayed Narcan being administered, not to the point that it mattered, but it did delay it. The person at Odd lived. I worked for a dispatch company very similar to Life Alert. An older lady in her 90s thought someone was intruding on her property, and called the cops. She had severe dementia though, and forgot she had called the cops, so when they rang her door she thought they were the intruders. So she hit her wrist button, to get in contact with us. Then she got our her gun. I then called the police, while also talking to her, and literally on the recording you could hear her taking shots at the police officers on scene, while they freaked out while I, and I got my supervisor as soon as possible, tried to talk her down. The police and I eventually got her to calm down and stop firing, but apparently she had missed a police officer by just 6 inches. Family had to get involved, and she ended up moving to a nursing home shortly after. Dementia sucks. I have been doing this more than a decade, and have taken some absolutely nutty calls. The one that stands out is not, but it stays with me. I took a 911 from a woman who asked me for an ambulance. Dead voice, no emotion. She could have been calling the bank for their hours. I got and confirmed her address, again, very calm. Then I asked her what was going on. In that same lifeless voice she said my son is dead. There was no change in her tone whatsoever. I asked her if she was sure, asked her to start CPR which she flatly refused. I asked her please, let's at least try CPR, and she said he is cold and dead, and it's my fault. My fault. My fault. Her tone never changed. Turns out she had caught her 15 year old some doing arxes. He puked at some point. She was totally clueless, and just sent his ass to bed. Sometime during the night he either took more, or what he had taken caused him to vomit again, and he choked to death. I will never forget that dead tone she had, because in a way she was right. Her ignorance did contribute to his death, but she is not even partially to blame. Try telling her that though. That woman will never stop hating herself. I feel for her to this day and that was 2009 ish. Used to take ambulance calls for 999 over here in the UK and thought I'd add a more happier call here to buck the trend. I managed to deliver 5 babies while doing that job. The first one the dad was on. First thing he screams is back quote the head's coming out the head's coming out. Another one they were on their way to hospital when the baby just started arriving, so I delivered a baby over the phone on the side of a motorway. The sound of a baby crying during childbirth is the most stress relieving sound of all. One of the families wrote in to say thank you, and I got to meet them and the baby. On the flip side, hangings were never fun. Thankfully I only ever had two. The first was a Tuesday morning, just started my shift at 7am, first call. Woman comes on screaming this blood cuddling noise, just pure emotion. Nothing like in the films. Turns out her husband had hung himself in their bedroom with the kids still in the house. So she was trying to keep the kids out while get an ambulance. The other was a man who called ever so calmly to say his daughter had hung herself. I didn't understand why he was so calm and measured. Then he said at the end he was a police officer, so had seen this before. Poor guy. I still think about those two callers. A woman complaining of spiders in her vagina in college. I worked as an EMT in a major city. Not the craziest call I ever had but one of the wackiest call outs we ever got was to respond to a woman complaining of spiders in her vagina. I'll never forget pulling up to this major intersection where, sure enough, there's this old lady lying on the sidewalk with her pants off and legs spread up in the air. Turns out it was this transient lady in her 70s who had been having some wild hallucinations. We still had to check for spiders. I've been a 911 operator for 10 years. I'll never forget the time I took a noise complaint. The caller was complaining that the children in the street were being too loud. Happens all the time. Annoying but no big deal. The odd thing was she was calling me through a relay service for the deaf. Another one, we were working a barricaded subject call with SWAT, called out the helicopter, and had them circling the area for what seemed like hours. This usually leads to calls of citizens concerned that we are looking for someone and want to know if it's safe. So, after constantly answer the phones and telling people it's fine I get a phone call from a girl. 
She asked about the helicopter. I gave her the basic rundown. She then dozed. Oh okay. So the helicopter isn't in danger? She thought it was crashing and had been for hours. Of course we get bad calls. I try not to focus on those.